In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at trigonometric identities. When solving trig identities, what you want to do is you have to prove that a particular statement is true. What you need to do is pick one side of the equation, let's say the right-hand side or the left-hand side, and just work with that side of the equation, manipulating that expression to achieve the other side. What you cannot do with trig identities is multiply across, in this case by sine theta, cos theta. You can't try to get rid of the denominators, manipulate the entire equation. Uh, when solving these identities, again, you just have to pick one side of the equation and just work with that side solely uh, to get the right-hand side, or vice versa, pick the right-hand side, and you can only work with the right-hand side to get the left-hand side. So for this trig identity here, what we're going to do is uh, let's start off, and we'll start off working with the left-hand side of the equation. So I'm going to, working with the left-hand side of the equation, I want to be able to show that it is equal to cos theta plus 1, all divided by sine theta cos theta. Starting us off here, one common technique is to get a common denominator. Let's go ahead and do that. So you can see here I've gotten a common denominator. Let's go ahead now and distribute this cos of theta into the brackets. Doing so, we get. So going ahead there and distributing the cos theta into the 1 plus cos theta, we end up getting cos theta plus cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. And as you know here, uh, cos squared theta plus sine squared theta, that's equal to 1. So now we can go ahead and this will equal the cos of theta plus 1 all divided by sine theta cos theta, which is exactly equal to the right-hand side. So in this example here, we start off with the left-hand side. As you see, uh, I went ahead and got a common denominator, which is a very common technique uh, as your first step. Whenever something's split apart, you see here we had like sort of two trig fractions. And on the right-hand side, we didn't have that. Everything was together. So that's the first hint here. Uh, you want to put everything together in one expression. So we did so. Distribute the cos theta, use a simple identity, cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is 1. Simplifying, we get the right-hand side. So we've proven this trig identity. Let's take a look at another example. In the next example here, we want to show that 1 plus cos 2 theta, all divided by sine 2 theta, is cotangent theta. Now, in this example here, if you, to decide what side of the equation to work with, I'm going to work with the left-hand side because there's a lot more going on here. With the right-hand side, there isn't much to work with, so brings about a lot of questions as to what you would do. At least with the left-hand side, I see double angle formers I can substitute in. So let's go ahead and do that. Starting us off here, I'm going to make the observation the cos of 2 theta. I have three different formulas to choose from. Those three different formulas are the following. So you can see here on the right-hand side, we know the cos of 2 theta is equal to these three equations, these three expressions. And I can substitute any of these in. But what I want to do here is you notice your cotangent of theta is cos over sine. So I'm not going to choose to substitute this expression, and that'll leave me with a sign on the top. But I'm going to choose to substitute this expression here in. And as discussed here, you can see that the ones will cancel. Uh, furthermore, I'm going to go ahead and um, rewrite the sine of 2 theta as 2 sine theta cos theta. Doing so, we get. And you can see here the 2s will cancel, one of the cos's will cancel, and I'm exactly left over with the cos of theta over the sine of theta, which is equal to cotangent of theta, which is our right-hand side. So you can see in this question here, again, we start with the left-hand side. Just manipulating the left-hand side, using what trig identities we had, trig properties we had, we ended up getting the right-hand side. So this trig identity is true. Let's take a look at another. All right, in the next example here, again, uh, we have an equation, cos to the power of 4x minus sine to the power of 4x is cos 2x. Uh, you can work with the left-hand side or right-hand side here. Um, if you take a look here, I feel that there's a lot more going on in the right-hand side. We can kind of express this as the difference of squares. So let's go ahead and work with the left-hand side here. So working with the left-hand side, uh, we end up expressing this as a difference of squares we get. And you'll notice here this takes the place of my x, and this takes the place of my y. We know x squared minus y squared uh, will factor into x minus y uh, times your x plus y. Right away, we know cos squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1, and therefore this reduces to be cos squared x minus sine squared x. And as you know, with our double angle formula for cos, this is one of our equations we have. And you'll notice here we've now proven our identity. Let's take a look at another example. In the next example here, we want to prove the following identity. Um, again, I'm going to go ahead and work with the left-hand side here. I'm seeing here a sum of cubes formula that I could use. Um, and then hopefully that'll cancel off the bottom and we get some simplification. Let's go ahead and work with the left-hand side. So working with the left-hand side and applying our sum of cubes formula to the numerator, we get 
So we'll go ahead and apply in our sum of cubes form. We get the following decomposition for the numerator. Again, to remind you here, we have that uh, x cubed plus y cubed. In general, your sum of cubes form will factor into x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared. And that's what we have here. Now, uh, right away, we see the cancellation we wanted. Signed t plus cos t will cancel off in the top and bottom. We also have the property that the sine squared of t plus the cos squared of t is equal to 1. So this simplifies to become 1 minus uh, sine t cos of t. And you'll see here we actually don't have the right-hand side yet, but uh, we can make the following observation. The sine of 2t is equal to 2 sine t cos of t. Therefore, the sine of 2t divided by 2 will equal sine t cos of t. So I can go ahead and replace the sine t cos of t uh, with this expression here. Doing so, we get. And then you can see as I continue this along, I can get a common denominator here. And we have exactly the right-hand side. So again, starting off the left-hand side here, we applied the sum of cubes form to the top. Got some cancellation. I could see that I was fairly close to the right-hand side. Um, I just had to do one extra substitution, and that was that the sine t cos t is equal to sine 2t over 2. Substituted that in got a common denominator, and we've now proven the right-hand side. Let's take a look at another example. So for the following identity here, we want to show um, the following expression is true. Now, uh, you'll see here on the right-hand side, we have everything expressed in as one fraction. You don't have that here. It's kind of broken apart. So that's the first tip here. We're going to work with the left-hand side and get a common denominator. Doing so, we get. So going ahead and getting a common denominator here, we have the following. I'm going to go ahead and expand this out and expand this out and go ahead and simplify. We'll also expand the bottom out here. You can see I have a difference of squares. Uh, doing so, we get. So going ahead here and expanding everything out, we get cancellation on the ones. Um, we also get cancellation on the sine squares. And we end up collecting up like terms here. We have one, two, three, uh, four sine x's to put together here. So doing so, we have the following. Uh, four sine x over 1 minus uh, sine squared of x. Now you can see here that um, I can do a substitution here. I can get rid of uh, 1 minus sine squared x and change that to cos squared x. And you'll notice here what we have is I have secant and tan. Well, tan is sine over cos, and secant is 1 over cos. So I can break this apart as follows. And you have here uh, your sine x over cos of x is tan of x and 1 over cos of x is your secant of x. So this will simplify and become 4 secant x tan x, which is, in fact, your right-hand side. All right, let's take a look at another trig identity. And for our final example here, we want to show the following uh, trig identity. This involves logarithms. You see these logarithms here. Okay, let's take a look. Let's start off with the left-hand side. You'll notice I'm taking the log. The assumed base here is 10. Again, if they don't write it, that's a base of 10. So log base 10, you're adding two logarithms with the same base. We can change this to multiplication. Doing so, we get. And then going ahead and we're going to expand out now that we can change this to multiplication. Now let's expand out uh, what's inside the logarithm, giving us. And you can see here we have cancellation on the cos x sine x, leaving us with cos squared x minus sine squared x. Simplifying, we get the log of cos squared x minus sine squared x, and that is exactly equal to the cos of 2x, which is our right side of our equation. So you can see here a uh, pretty quick uh, proof of this trig identity involving logarithms as well. Again, you can apply your logarithm properties. Then I went ahead and expanded, simplified, and ended up getting that this was equal to the log of cos 2x. All right, that concludes today's lesson on trig identities. Thank you.